Hi guys, I'm Alexandre Dominique and in this video I will present our paper Fictionalizing AS like ciphers. This is a joint work with Thomas Perrin back when I was working at NTU Singapore. As you probably guessed, our work is about AES implementations. Nowadays, AES is running on a wide range of platforms from resource constrained devices to high end servers. And it appears that many embedded devices do not enjoy hardware AES engines and rely on software implementations instead. We know that AES can be efficiently implemented in software using pre computed lookup tables, the so called T table implementation. But we also know that it implies memory accesses that are key dependent, which can lead to cache timing attacks. One can prevent such attacks by using a constant time implementation variance, uh, like bit slicing, for instance. And that's what our work is about. It improves bit slice AS implementations for processors that do not use vector or SIMD instructions. Our paper focuses on 32-bit uh, embedded platforms, especially ARM Cortex-M and 32-bit RISC-5 processors. If we have a look at the results previously reported in the literature for uh, those platforms, we see that AES-128 runs around 100 cycles per byte. And if we have a deeper look on how the cycles are spent within the cipher, we see that many of them are spent for the shift rules operation, which is somewhat counterintuitive because the shift rules is maybe the simplest operation within the AES. It's just byte reordering within the state. So let's first try to understand why it's so costly in a B-slice setting. So here is the 16-byte AES internal state. Um, but because we're interested in bit slicing, we will consider the 128-bit version. If we consider a 16-bit slice that we reorder in a row-wise manner, so it can be stored in a 16-bit register, and if we try to apply the shift rows, so for the first row it's trivial, we have nothing to do, but for uh, the second one, we see that it translates to a nibble-wise rotation, and it will be the same for the two remaining rows, but with different rotation indexes. Now, if we go back to the 32-bit uh, architecture, we see that we still have 16 bits available within our registers. So we can process a second block uh, for free. It can be actually useful for modes of operation that allow parallelization. It can also be useful if we want to integrate countermeasures against fault attack because it will provide uh, redundant computations for free. Anyway, uh, at the end, this is what we have to, to compute to apply the shift rows. So we now have byte-wise rotations instead of nibble-wise rotations. And the previous work uh, did it that way. So it has to deal with a lot of bit mask and bitwise operations. And actually, it can be slightly improved, as highlighted by Peter Detman when we first published uh, this paper and so we pointed out that one can use the swap move technique so it will be uh, a little bit more efficient but what we have to keep in mind is that we have to apply to compute those operations for each slice independently so we have to compute this eight times per round so the shift rules will remain uh, costly and the goal of our paper is to investigate how we can mitigate this cost to improve the AES bit slice performance. So first, what we tried to do is to investigate if it will be interesting to have another representation, another way to pack uh, the bits within the registers. So if we only consider a quarter of a slice for eight blocks now, so we'll need a 32-bit register to store a quarter of a slice and so we'll need four 32-bit registers to store a single slice. But what is nice now is that the shift rows can be computed using 32-bit rotations instead of byte-wise rotations. And that's why we called it the barrel shift rows representation, because, for instance, on ARM processors, 
32-bit rotations can be computed for free thanks to the barrel shifter. So it means that using this representation on ARM processors, uh, we should be able to pay nothing for the shift rows. Um, yeah, so at the end we have three 32-bit rotations per slice, per round. So it means that the shift rows operation required 324 32 bit rotations per round. 24, sorry, 24 32 bit rotations per round. But on the downside, it requires to process eight blocks in parallel, which can be quite inappropriate for embedded devices that usually have to deal with small payloads. Um, also, it requires 32 32 bit. Uh, registers to store the 1024-bit internal state and it can also be troublesome because on ARM processors only uh, 14 such registers are available so we, we would need a lot of stores and loads on the stack which will clearly have an impact on performances. Last but not least it also increases the RAM consumption by a factor 4 to store the round keys because for the add round key operation, we don't have eight registers to consider anymore, but 32 instead. So although uh, the barrel shift rule representation comes with a lot of drawbacks, we considered it for our benchmark. I will present the results uh, at the end of this talk, but uh, we also investigated if we could find another optimization path. And to do so, we had a look at the fixed slicing implementation strategy that we initially introduced as the new representation for the gift block ciphers. And it allowed us to, to boost its performance on 32-bit uh, platforms. And the idea of the fixed slicing implementation strategy is to fix uh, a slice to never move and to adjust the other accordingly for uh, the remaining operation. Um, yeah, so in the case of GIFs, we only have to care about the DS box, uh, but we thought that it could also be of interest for other ciphers because uh, a lot of them require to move the bits around within the registers at some point. So coming up with an alternative representation can help to boost the performances. And so, yeah, what about the AES? We tried to have a look about it. And so in the case of AES, so we move the bits within the registers during the shift rows, and we do it in the same way for all the registers. So we cannot fix a single slice to never move, uh, because if we do so, uh, we will not have the bit properly aligned for the S-Box operation then. So it means that fix slicing the AES uh, means that we have to fix all the slices, which means that at the end, we simply omit the shift rows operation. So this is not an issue for the, for the S-Box layer, as I just mentioned, because we will still, we will still have uh, the bits within the bytes that will remain in line. But on the other hand, we will need to adapt the mix columns operation. Um, also note that we will have a synchronization with the classical representation every four rounds, since four applications of the shift rows operation uh, lead back to the original position. So to understand uh, our Adjustment of the mix columns, I will briefly recall how it can be efficiently computed in a bit slice manner. So it was introduced a decade ago by Kasper and Schwaber. So here is the um, AS uh, mix column operation. And so what we can remark is that for uh, each byte within the column, we will have to multiply, multiply it by two, add it's adjacent bytes multiplied by three and add the two remaining bytes, right? And it will be the same for each, each byte within the column. Um, 
Yes, and the multiplication by two uh, correspond to uh, left shift and also a conditional uh, exclusive OR with this value, depending on the value of the discarded bit. And for the multiplication by three, we can simply consider it as a multiplication by two and an exclusive OR. So um, let's see how it translates to the in the bit slice setting. So for the multiplication by two, we don't have to compute the, the shift because the corresponding bit will be just in another register, right? So we can we just have to consider the proper register. And what is nice is that for the conditional uh, exclusive OR, we can just add uh, the register that contains all the most significant bits, right? So we just have to add it at the proper place and that's it. We have our multiplication by two. For the multiplication by three of the adjacent rule, adjacent uh, byte, sorry. So we can see that we can get the adjacent byte by a rotation uh, to the right by eight. And then as for the multiplication by two, we consider uh, the right register instead of performing a, a left shift. And then for the remaining uh, bytes, we do the same. We just have to compute right rotations to the right. And this is it. We have our mixed columns in the B slice setting. Actually, it can be factorized. So we will have common terms that will appear. And yeah, this is actually quite efficient and can be computed in 27 XOR and 16 rotations in total. So now let's see how it uh, comes with our uh, fixed slide representation. So yeah, in the remaining slide, I will just consider the, the first register for the sake of simplicity, but the same applies for all the other ones. So normally this is what we should get, but in our case, because we did not compute the shift rows, we will have to compute the bitewise rotations for each register during the mixed columns. So at first glance, it's not very clear what's um, the in interest of doing it. It does not seem to uh, clearly improve the performances since we since we are performing are computing these bitewise rotations anyway. But the thing is that um, we can do some factorization. Instead, we can instead of computing a bitewise rotation with different indexes for each register, we can see that this can be transformed to this. And the interest is that we will have common terms that will appear and that will help to uh, have something more efficient than the classical representation. Actually, it saves uh, 56 logical operations and 16 logical shifts. And it will be even more significant in uh, the next round, because in the next round, the shift rule is now simple to compute, right? We have, so the bitewise rotation now use the same indexes for all the registers. And so if you compare it to the previous run, we, ac we actually saved this bitewise rotation, right? So now, during the second round, it saves 80 logical operations and 32 logical shifts compared to the classical, classical representation. Then for the, uh, the third round, it's actually similar to uh, the first one. And it's obvious because it's just that the index rotation is swapped between uh, this row and this row, right? Instead of having a bitewise rotation by six, we have it by two, but it's exactly the same as in here, right? So we have the same result here. And uh, last but not least, what is nice for uh, the fourth round is that we are now synchronized with the classical representation. So we don't have not, nothing weird to do at all, just uh, implement the classical mixed columns in a bit slice setting. So 
typically it saves the entire shift rows cost every uh, four rounds. So if I sum it up, um, omitting the shift rows allows to speed up the linear layer uh, on 32-bit platforms. And also compared to the barrel shift rows representation, we only process two blocks at a time, uh, which is more appropriate to embedded devices. On the other hand, it requires four different implementations of the mixed columns, so it has a slight impact on the code size. And also, I didn't mention it, but it requires to uh, adapt the round keys accordingly. So it will have also a small impact on the key schedule operation. But what's interesting is that we can come up with uh, several trade-offs. So for instance, if code size is uh, really a matter, we can define a semi-fixed sliced representation where we will compute the shift rows every two rounds only. And the, the idea behind it is that computing the shift rows after two rounds is way more efficient have, as we just seen because we have the same rotation indexes for uh, the two rows to consider. So yeah, we can come with different trade-offs and so this table uh, summarizes the number of operations required for the linear layer over four rounds. And so I we tried to distinguish the logical operation from the logical shift and rotations because as I mentioned, those can be uh, computed for free on ARM, for instance, thanks to the bar shifter. So on ARM, this is the, the operations that really matters. And for the fully fixed slice implementation, we see that we have almost uh, a factor of two between the number of operations. So that's a significant improvement. Uh, obviously, it's a little bit less efficient in the semi-fixed slice since it, it's a trade-off between code size and efficiency. But and here is the results of our benchmark on ARM Cortex M4 processor. So the previous results by Stoffelen and Schwabe runs around 100 cycles per byte, while uh, our fully fixed sliced implementation runs around 80 cycles per byte. Note that it's we almost have the same um, results for the fully fixed slide and the barrel shift rows representation. So indeed, as expected, the barrel shift rows is not that efficient uh, because of all the loads and store we have to do on the stack because we lack of uh, registers to store the entire, entire internal state. So overall, with fixed slicing, we have roughly 20% spin improvement before uh, previous results. And yeah, this is a little bit different on uh, RV32i, so 32-bit RIS5, where the barrel shift rows is clearly more interesting uh, for this platform. And it comes from the fact that on RV32i, we have 32 32-bit registers. So we have, um, less overhead due to load and stores on the stack. And yeah, the bar shift rolls is clearly the, the most efficient operation, but still the fully fixed light is also very efficient with uh, approximately 30% improvement before previous work. And yeah, I didn't mention it, but as you can see, we have the same uh, cycles cost for the S-Box because we directly reuse the same Xbox implementation from uh, Stoffelen and Schwabe. So it's only the linear layer implementation that is changing here. All right, so if I sum it up, uh, fixed slicing the AES allows to outperform uh, previous bit slice results by 21% and 30% on ARM Cortex M4 and RV32i respectively. 
And especially the barrel shift rules representation fits well the RV32i architecture. And it can be significantly enhanced thanks to the bitmanip extension because actually we uh, spent many cycles for the, the rotations, but if we could do this, if we could do a rotation in a cycle, single cycle, it could run uh, clearly faster. So yeah, it may be uh, an interesting further direction. Uh, note that our works also directly improves masked AS implementation that are based on bit slicing. In our paper, we also improve um, the performance for a masked, a first order masked AS implementation. Uh, you can have a look if you are interested, and it will also be interesting to uh, assess uh, the gain of fixed slicing for higher order masking schemes. And also what's interesting is that our techniques applies to other AES-like ciphers. And in our paper, we also briefly mention an application to Skinny128, and it led to improvements up to a factor of four compared to the previous results reported in, in the literature for this cipher. Um, all our code is available at GitHub, so please feel free to, to have a look and to, to use it. Actually, it's at, uh, it has already been integrated in uh, two projects, so uh, in the Rust Crypto package, so they had a significant improvement, uh, about 2.5 faster. Um, so if I remember correctly, it works on a 64-bit uh, implementation. So it's not only of interest for 32-bit platforms. It can also be quite interesting for larger platforms, as long as we do not consider uh, vector or SAMD instructions. It has also been integrated into PQM4, uh, which is used to benchmark a pass quantum control algorithm. So here are the references I talk uh, during this presentation. And thank you for your attention. Uh, please feel free to contact us for any question or remarks uh, at the following email addresses. Thanks, see you.